Welcome to a maiden speech, and as we know, there is no interruption. Can I welcome the new member on the maiden speech, Sarah Dyke? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for granting me the opportunity to make my maiden speech today. I'd like to begin by paying tribute to my predecessor. The Honourable Gentleman served his constituents over his tenure in Parliament, and I thank him for his service. He spoke up for one of the major cultural exports in our region. Cider. Yeah, yeah. Written <laughs> records of cider production in Somerset exist as early as the 12th century, and Somerset has become synonymous with and proud to be the ancestral home of the cider industry. Cider is so important to our region that until the passing of the Truck Act in 1887, which prohibited the practice, labourers were often paid with cider with some of the top labourers often earning eight pints a day in payment. <laughs> Although prohibited, I understand that the practice was slow to dry up in Somerset <laughs> and continued well into the 20th century. The industry today, though, sustains thousands of jobs and hundreds of farmers. Our cider is renowned for its quality, and I will champion the industry during my time here. Somerset and Froome is also a large agricultural base and is home to many of the country's finest farmers and rural businesses, all producing food for our tables to high environmental and animal welfare standards. Yeah, yeah. Farmers are essential to the UK economy and our way of life. We must back our hard-working farmers and provide them with a fair deal to ensure we have food security long into the future. Yeah. I herald from a family that has been farming in the area for over 250 years. So I will always stand up and fight for our farmers who not only produce delicious and healthy food and drink, but who also protect our precious environment. The importance of improving the environment is critical to a rural area such as Somerton and Froome because we face the effects of climate change firsthand and the damage it can cause will be devastating for our local communities. So I am committed to campaigning on this issue and call for the positive changes we need to see. Now it's an honour to be elected as the latest Liberal to represent this area. I am proud to follow in the footsteps of Thomas Hughes and more recently David Heath, the last Liberal Democrat to re represent this constituency. David is a true champion of this area who fought for 18 years for the people of Somerton and Froome and I would like to thank him for all he has done in Somerset during his career. If I am able to achieve half of what he was able to do, I am confident that I will have done a good job. So often, leading women are overlooked, and I would therefore like to recognise some of the pioneering women from my area. I'm the second woman to represent the town of Froome, following on from Mavis Tate MP, who represented Froome from 1935 to 1945, and used Parliament to campaign for and champion women's rights. Emma Seeley Harris, the documentary photographer who helped expose human rights abuses in the Congo Free State under Leopold II of Belgium, also lived in Froome. And finally, I'd like to mention Emma Shepherd, another Victorian pioneer who called for workhouse reform. So from people to places, a short tour of the seat which I am so proud to represent. We start in Somerton, the ancient capital of Somerset, and from where the county gains its name. The old English name for Somerset means people living at or dependent on Somerton. The terms Somerton and Somerset derive from the land of the summer people, as Somerset was marshy and wet during the winter months and only dry and useful in the summer. That is, until the Somerset levels were drained by the monks to farm there during the Middle Ages. So now on to Langport, which aptly gains its name to, as it was a port town. Langport is the natural crossing point on the River Parrot, over which the Royalist soldiers fled through the town while being pursued by Cromwell's forces after the Battle of Langport, held on Pick's Hill nearby. 
It's also home to the Langport Mummers, who perform the Alfred play, based on King Alfred and his battle with Guthrum the Viking. Alfred is known to have been based close to Langport before his battle with Guthrum's great heathen army around the 8th century. So from the westernmost part of the constituency, we move to the southeastern edge, to King Alfred's Tower, which was built by Henry Hoare on the county border with Wiltshire. This folly tower is sited where King Alfred rallied his troops before defeating Guthrum, and by doing so, he regained control of Wessex. Mm. Now, we mustn't leave this part of the constituency without mentioning Wincanton, which is close by. In 2002, Wincanton was twinned with Unc Moorpork from Terry Pratchett's Discworld series, <laughs> making it perhaps the only place in the UK that's twinned with a place that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> now, just north of Wincanton is the ancient Selwood Forest, which reaches north to Froome. Unfortunately, in Somerset, the Selwood Forest is somewhat of a rarity, as the county only possesses 8% of tree canopy cover, signifying the urgent action that's needed for environment, as does the lack of tree cover across the country. At the last election, all political parties pledged to increase tree cover across the country, and I will be working hard throughout my time in Parliament to restore our natural environment, and I hope progress continues to be made. So we emerge from the Selwood Forest into Froome, the home of J.W. Singer and Sons Art Metalworks, which presents the industrial legacy of the town. This foundry used to produce iconic monuments, building, uh, buildings such as Lady Justice on top of the Old Bailey. And closer to this place, in 1902, the magnificent statue of Boudicca and her daughters was assembled on the Thames Embankment on the southwest end of Westminster Bridge, where the statue stands today. Now, this is quite some feat, given that J.W. Singer cast his first brass candlesticks in 1848 using turnips as moulds. <laughs> so turning to the current debate, too often when we talk about levelling up, we think of urban areas in the north of England. Now there is no doubt that this, those areas need support, but rural communities like mine are often forgotten yeah. and without action they risk falling back even further. So I pay tribute to my honourable friends for North Shropshire and Westmoreland and Lonsdale who have worked hard to ensure rural areas are not forgotten in this bill. They have tabled amendments to improve rural bus services which are sadly neglected in Somerton and Froome and in other rural constituencies and to introduce new planning classes for second homes and holiday lets so local authorities have more power to limit their impact on local housing supply. Now, rural areas like Somerton and Froome are suffering deeply with the cost of living crisis. The cost of housing is often disproportionate to the level of wages that are available, and people have to use their cars to travel further for work or access services like dentists, GPs, hospitals or schools and off-grid fuels have been significantly more expensive to heat homes than gas. I will work to ensure that off-grid rural homes never have to face this crisis again. That's why Amendment 6 on producing the Rural Proofing Report is so important. I need go without saying that the cost of delivering rural services in rural areas is greater than in urban areas. Exactly. So it is vital that the levelling up takes into account, and I'm delighted that my Liberal Democrat colleagues in the other place have tabled this amendment. And while I'm disappointed that the government has not gone as far as to support it entirely, their concession is welcome. And finally, I wouldn't be a Liberal Democrat if I didn't mention the importance of local government. We desperately need to see more powers devolved to a local government. But I also have deep concerns about the way that this can sometimes be done. Devolution should be implemented with an understanding of what the local area needs. 
Mm. So just because devolution works well in one place, in a certain way, it doesn't mean it will work across rural mm -hmm. Somerset yeah, yeah. in the so same way. So I strongly urge the government to give more powers to Somerset, but in consultation with the people of Somerset, so we are given greater decision-making powers in our local area, not just implementing what Westminster thinks we need. So I look forward to being a hard-working member of this House and a great representative for Somerton and Froome. To all the people of Somerset, Somerset, Ayla. Yeah. Yeah.